Thanks to the supporters of channel member Matt Roberts. Oh, boys and girls, we've had a little bit of comment section kerfuffle over the weekend as a few people seem to have forgot the schedule on the channel. Remember, the way things work at the moment, you only ever get tour videos Monday to Friday. The weekends are always for something a little bit different. At the moment, that's one Kylian Mbappe director of football PSG video and one something else video. And then sometimes if we get to 5,000 likes on a PSG video, we'll do an extra one of those in the week instead of a tour video as well, which is particularly handy at the moment when I'm having to do double the amount of matches in between because of the whole B-team situation. So it's all fine. Me doing a Nottingham Forest video, you didn't lose anything. That was an extra video. It's silly gooses. Should we, should we crack on? Hello, welcome to part 39 of the Tour de France. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a massively important top of the table clash in Ligue 2. Plus, eventually, we play another normal football match as well. There's, there's, lots, there's lots of faffing about going on between now and then. But the important thing is we play Amiens, who, as you can see at the moment, are the team we are battling for the title with. We are actually doing pretty, looking pretty solid in the automatic promotion slots. A win here would actually put us... To the top of the table as well we have been in great form as you can see just dropping the odd point here and there against green yamp against toulouse but by and large we are we are picking up points we are rattling in goals bradley barcola is the top scorer in the entire division he's having a lovely time of it uh, we're actually doing very well in the french cup as well so we might even show that as the second match in this episode as we start to get a little bit deeper into the French Cup. Ozer, although they are in our league, in my mind, they're a big club because throughout most of my life, I feel like they've been a, a team in the top flight in France, even though um, apparently they haven't been in recent years. I mean, that feels like a feels like a long time for them to have not been a top... Is that, is that serious? Ten years in real life? That feels wrong to me. Feels very wrong. Um... But there is one other piece of news before we get into the match. We have broken our club record transfer, or at least the record during the save. It probably isn't the club record transfer, actually, because, of course, we were at this level before. Yeah, it's... Oh, no, there it is. Highest transfer fee paid is this one. €149,000. Um, that probably isn't true. But Luca Diaz, our new goalkeeper. That's right. We've gone and got another new goalkeeper. A goalkeeper fit for Ligue 1, maybe. I thought he was going to be when I signed him. He is just another three-star one. Well, our scouts seem to have a real blind spot for goalkeepers. We've been finding it throughout the series. This guy uh, was scouted as a four-and-a-half-star current ability goalkeeper. And obviously, because of that, I bit their arm off and went and bought him. Um, he'd been playing regularly for Bafka in this division for a long time. I mean, he's been playing... He's got nearly 200 games at this level um, and has been a backup in the division above previously as well. But... Not quite the four and a half star goalkeeper I thought he was going to be. He is an upgrade on Jeff, so I'm I'm not that upset. But I maybe wouldn't have spent that amount of money for a three star player. It was the bulk of our transfer budget. We still do have a little bit left, and the window isn't yet over, so there might be more business. Um, but at the moment, that is the uh, the only business that we've done so far in this January transfer window, other than the fact that uh, Anthony. Oh no, that was at the end of August. Mandrea left. Very sad. How's Mandrea getting on? Playing for Red Star. Um, he's played three times, conceded three goals. That seems about right. Um, so this is the team for the game against Amiens, our top of the table game. New boy Diaz making his second appearance in goal. The right back situation, by the way, getting even worse. Van der Mersch, who is our only right back, is out for six months with a broken leg. So at the moment, we have no right back who's going to be fit at all for the rest of the season in the in the squad. That, I mean, that's not strictly true. Ahmed Fadi is in the squad. I've moved him up from the youth system, um, but he is only one and a half star current ability. So he's probably not ready to be a starter for us yet. So when I say there might be more business, there's almost certainly going to be a right back coming in. And uh, yeah, we need one because Van der Mersch is injured. Jerf also injured at the moment. He's going to be out for the next four weeks. Um, he did actually get injured after the new guy arrived. Um, it's not a case of him picking up an injury and us spending money. <laughs> we signed the new guy and he immediately got injured as if to say, here you go, have my spot. Fair enough. So Diaz in goal, a back four of Vita, Matsima, Maltinus and Deleste playing out right back. Fari and Lopi in midfield. 
Lamina and Nguema out wide and then Tutu and double Steve up front. Um, we actually have two players in the Media Dream 11 as well. If you're wondering where Barcola is, uh, he's uh, he's very, very tired after his previous game. But we do have um, Nguema now in the Media Dream 11 as well, along with double Steve in the media now also thinking we're going to finish fourth, which is a massive improvement on where we were at the start of the season. But Nguema certainly starting to fulfil some of that potential um, oh, well, we, uh, we've got another one of these stupid BT match. I forget it's happening, and then it happens. Oh, and it's so very upsetting. Um, but, yeah, we've got that to deal with as well, which obviously I'll do all that off camera. I'm not going to get an instant result skill. I know lots of you keep telling me to do it. I'm not going to, because if I get one, you'll think I'm using it. I know what you're... I, I'm, most of you, most of you are lovely. The same ones who moaned that they got an extra video at the weekend will no doubt find a way to, oh, bit convenient that you're uh, winning all these matches off camera now, Kev. You're using that instant result button. Well, that's why I'm not going to get one because I don't need that in my life. Thank you very much. Um, the, the, the rascals have spoiled it for everyone. They haven't spoiled it for anyone. They've spoiled it for me. I'm the one who's having to do all the extra in betweeny nonsense. It doesn't, it doesn't change your experience at all. That's really poor from Diaz. That's £130,000 of a goalkeeping there. Uh, that was straight at him. And I mean, this is going to be the thing now. We're going to have the Jerf fan club starting to appear because I know, what you, I know what you're like. You get attached to goalkeepers. And once you make your mind up one way or the other, there's no change in you. So now you've seen him have a bit of a howler in the first time you've seen him. We officially don't like Diaz now and Jerf's going to have to come back in. Diaz goes down as a waste of money, which, I mean, I'm not necessarily against playing Jeff. They're very similar on this star rating. When we do the polygon comparison, they're very similar goalkeepers. Um, I think I just kind of got a little bit excited by a not 100% scouted player and probably should have learned my lesson after all these years playing football manager, but that is, uh, that is poor. Uh, we have conceded two early goals here and that is not really part of the script today. We've been playing very well recently. I, I suspect we might be suffering a little bit of the game punishing me for not playing for a few days because I'm recording this on Monday and I don't think I've loaded the game up since Thursday when I recorded the when I recorded Friday's episode. So it's been a few days. You know what football manager gets like if it thinks like if it feels like you're not playing for a few days. Oh, and good, I'm still having the same focusing issues I was having in the streamer showdown as well. The camera is not focused on me. Anyone who watched the stream of Showdown this weekend will be very familiar with the fact my camera has suddenly decided it doesn't want to focus on my face anymore, and I don't know what it's focusing on. Ah! Ah! Focus on my face! Right, hold on. We're going to try and fix it. Right, there you go. It is focusing on my face again now. It will probably drift again. I think it's because I still have COVID. Obviously, those of you who only watch the YouTube stuff might not know I currently have COVID. Tested positive for that on Friday, I think. Um, I've been pretty poorly over the weekend, but still streaming because it was a streamer showdown. And I think just the fact that I'm a little bit of a sweaty mess is making me look less like a human and the camera is struggling to pick me up sometimes. That's what I'm putting it down to. Um, but it does seem to have refocused it on my face. And I'm constantly looking back out, just checking. Are you still in focus? You're still in focus. Lovely. Stay that way. Of course, I need to focus on the football match that we are losing in a game that had the potential to lead to us being top of the league and now um, probably less so at this point. Let's make some substitutions. Uh, this is where we needed Barcola to be fit for this game. Um, we're going to shuffle them around and get Fowry out there as the winger and he is going to be the deep-lying playmaker and we may as well get Undilu on as well. He can play out there, and then Double Steve is having a rubbish game. Everyone's playing pretty poorly, really. We, I mean, should I put Cisse on for Deleste? At least we've got we've got two good left backs. Maybe Cisse could be a right back. I think we probably need to sign one as a matter of urgency, but for now, we've got two very good left backs. Let's just play one of them out there, I guess. Uh, free kick. This is a potential route back into the game through Fowry, and he scores. What a goal from Cyril Fowry. It is a free kick and a half, and with 20 minutes to go, we are right back in this. Look at that for a free kick. Goodness me. Hit that with his leg. Right, let's have another one, please. Um, straight up the other end, and it is Amiens with the 
corner and Adina heads it clear. Now Fowry with the chance to break. And he's got, uh, he's at 2-2 ahead of him. I think it is 2-2. Plays it over the top to 2-2. One-on-one -two. One with the keeper. Oh, 2-2 two -two had the chance to make it 2-2. Two -two. But unfortunately, fluffed his lines as we've seen him do so many times in the past. He doesn't like a one-on-one -on -one situation. He get any kind of high pressure and Gabriel 2-2 two -two does get a little bit alarmed. He spooks easily, that boy. Right, it's back with Diaz, who's been less incompetent looking in this second half, but to be fair, it's had less to do as well. And Dilu picking the ball up nicely. Now he's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Bridge and Dilu, and he scores. And it is 2-2. Two -two. Ten minutes left. We could still go on and win this. I've got to say, inspired substitutions in this match. And now we've lost the focus on the camera again because I moved my head too far. Please focus back in on me, camera. We've got a goal going on. Their goalkeeper was facing the wrong way while all that was going on. If anyone has any idea why my camera keeps losing its focus, please let me know. Um, I probably need to talk to Nerdphonic and he can come and fix it for me. Probably not while I've got COVID, though. Um, right, I am going to take off Lopi. Uh, Paolo's going to come on for him. We'll swap those over. Paolo's actually going to be leaving the club. Uh, we didn't get him tied down to a contract in time. And he is going to be joining Bordeaux at the end of the season, which is a little bit of a... Little bit of a taking the eye off the ball situation with him because he is a promising youngster um, who probably would have gone on to being a very important player for us. And we've now lost him for nothing at uh, 2 2. Nodding it, uh, sorry, it was Paolo nodding it down to 2 2 who tried to release Gale but couldn't do it. And now it's Vita to Gomez. Come on, let's go and grab a winner. Uh, we are all of a sudden in the ascendancy in this match. Those substitutions have made a massive difference. And now Amiens going down to 10 men. With five minutes to go, this is our opportunity to go to the top of the league. Playing against 10 men for the final few minutes, get the ball into the penalty area and score a goal. That is my inspired managerial mission. Gomez with the corner and, and dealing with the header that goes just over. And that was probably our chance. And it has ended 2-2. It's certainly a better result than losing 2-0 would have been. And we keep ourselves within two points at the top of the table. We keep the gap behind us as well. Um, but goodness me, what could have been if that goal had gone in? And now I need to get play this it's just, just stupid play in the stupid B team. Why oh, you stupid? Ah. Well, we weren't able to find a right back before the deadline day thing happened. Um, we have a limit of five loans per season. We've already used them. And I spent my money on a goalkeeper we didn't really need. Who are the five? There's only three loans. Oh, of course, we would have had loans carry on from last season, presumably. Um, have we got five loans? One. To, oh, Lemina would have carried on. And Carter. That's the three new ones. So we couldn't bring anyone in on loan. Couldn't find anybody we could actually afford uh, to come in and sign permanently. So we are going into the second half of the season without a recognised right back. Ahmed Fadi, who thinks he's a left midfielder. Um, he's going to be playing there for us. It'll be fine. In other news, though, we have made it through to the quarterfinal of the French Cup, beating Ozair, and we've got another team in Ligue 2 in the quarterfinal. Paris Saint-Germain have been knocked out of this already. Um, they were knocked out back in the seventh round by Rennes in a massive upset. Um, I'm not going to say that the French Cup is winnable, but there's as many Ligue 2 teams left in it as there are Ligue 1 teams. And we're the best one. So I guess Monaco are probably going to go on and win it. But I'd like to think we should be able to make our way past Bordeaux and have a semi-final for you in the next episode, which would be awesome. But for now, we have another important game in the league. We're facing a fifth-placed... Um, Socho, that's who they are, isn't it? I, the names... Do I look French to you? I don't do the names right. I don't look like anything to you because once again, the camera. Oh, see, I got cross and it focused itself now. Nothing, none of the settings of this camera have changed. I don't know why it started doing this in the last 24 hours. It is really making me very cross. Uh, so Diaz in goal, apart from Vita, Deleste, Matsima and Fadi, Fauri and Lopia midfield, Lemina and Nguema out wide with Barcola and Tutu. Up front, Double Steve has picked up an injury. He's not going to be out for long, um, just a couple of days. He's got the flu. Um, you might be questioning why Barcola and Tutu are playing that way round, uh, because that's the way round we've been playing them when it's been those two playing together. We actually pushed Tutu further forward, and Barcola seems to seems to be doing well playing from deep at the moment. I, I don't understand it. I mean, it 
for years I wanted to play too, too deep. We've finally been able to start all play him out wide. And now he doesn't seem to be performing in those areas as well as he does when we play him a little bit further forward. It makes no sense to me. Um, I'm just going with the flow on it. And here we have an example of it in motion, probably Barcola drifting out wide. Um, I thought he was going to dink it over to Tutu, but he didn't. He's actually run himself into a little bit of trouble there and given the ball away. This is a must-win game for us if we are going to... If we're serious about automatic promotion, this is a team who are just behind us in the playoffs. So it's a team, A, we want to beat to stay in the automatic promotion spots, but we also want to beat because if we do fall down into the playoffs, we need to feel like we can beat teams like this and not get caught out in the playoffs again. Lopi playing it forward to 2-2 now, who gives it to Lemina on the left-hand side. Can he find a cross? His players lining up in the middle and Guayma is one of them. It's a lovely cross and it's a very good header from Ulrich and Guayma. And it's 1-0 inside the first four minutes of this match. And that is, uh, I mean, uh, went to plan perfectly there. Uh, the two guys in the middle just staying out of the way. Big lad coming in off the wing, nodding it in. I mean, he's got he's basically clambered over the top of Barcola there because he's a big boy and he can clamber wherever he wants to clamber. Barcola has now picked up an injury, which is not ideal because then I'm going to swap them around again and play 2-2 deeper than Andilu because Andilu plays better further forward. It's I'm getting to know my boys more and more the longer time goes on. And I think we've just got a lot of very flexible forwards who, depending on what combination they're in, play better in different combinations and roles and things. It makes sense to it makes sense in here. It all makes sense in there. We're top of the league at the moment. Amien, I guess, are oh no, they're winning as well. So presumably we're not top of the league anymore. Let's actually put the league table on there. Uh Lopi with the corner looking for that near post where Nguema is lurking again. This time can't connect with his header, but Lopi picks it up again to play back into the area. Lemina uh, was one of several players who looked miles offside. None of them were actually flagged. So Probably would have got away with that if he'd have got a proper connection on it. Vita now with a cross to Barcola, who of course is carrying that knock. We're going to try and keep him on until half time. Um, he's not doesn't seem to be struggling too badly with it. Um, and he is, like I said before, top scorer in the division. He is a key, key player for us. So for as long as we can keep him on the pitch, we'd like to keep him on the pitch. Although we don't want to give him a proper injury. That's a very good save from Diaz. There you go. That's what you pay £130,000 for. I realise it was offside and wouldn't have counted anyway, but... It's nice to make the save. Right, I think we will take Barcola off now at half time. We're going to bring on Andilu and we will swap those two over now because that's the best way around. They play Bridge Andilu, who did, he did score in the last game, didn't he? He is a good finisher. Um, and fingers crossed, we can have a little bit more of that out of him today. Fardy has not looked out of place in his, uh, in his first league start for us. So maybe we're going to make a new star out of our youth set. But it's been a, it's been a season or two before someone's broken through from the youth team. That's not even true. And Guayma did it last year. Uh, Fowry's doing in the process of doing it this year. Fardy might have been next year's one. We're just pushing him a little bit further ahead on the schedule because of circumstances. That's why I didn't sign a right back. It wasn't that I couldn't find one. It was all because I, I, want, I wanted Fardy to push on. It was I'm, I'm being a, a developmental manager. It was all deliberate. Right, Bridge and Dealu turned his man, but then ran into another one, unfortunately, and that looked offside, referee. Can we... Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. We've got Matsima there to just clean up the mess, and now 2-2, two -two, breaking clear, charging down this right-hand side, and Guayma is struggling to keep up with him support. It does end up back with Nguema. What a pass from him to Andilu, and there is the finish. And that is brilliant football all round. 2-2, two -two, doing what he does best and drifting out onto the flanks from that deeper position, Knocking it back to Nguema, who is just, he is a creative force. And what a cross this is. It's perfectly placed, perfectly weighted. It's a lovely finish from Andilu. And it's 2-0 now to us. And we are, we're looking good. This has been a very productive episode. We've had the uh, the saving of the point against Amien. We're hopefully picking up a result here as well. We're into the quarterfinal of the cup. And we didn't sign a right back because we want to develop our own. It's all it's all coming together. We're going to have a league de and French Cup double this season. Has that ever been done before? Fingers crossed we can push on and do that. I mean, we're not going to win the Cup. Must not get distracted by the Cup. The only goal this season is to win promotion. Please don't get distracted. But I'm going to get distracted by the Cup. I know full well I'll get distracted by the Cup. And 
Uh, because I'm talking, because I've said cup so many times, I've got distracted enough to let a goal back in. Um, with half an hour still to go, Socho are back in this match. So we probably do need to focus in a little bit again. And I, I was going to question the goalkeeper. I don't think that's fair that time, actually. I don't think he's done too badly. Amien have conceded two goals. It's now 2-2 between them and Paris FC. So as it stands, we are back at the top of the table again. And we're going to make some substitutions. Uh, Fadi is shattered, as you would expect, really. We're going to bring on Musa Cisse to play it right back again, like we did in that previous game. Lemina can come off for Gotam. And Nguema is also tired, so Gomez can come on for him. And we'll put Fowry out onto that wing and we'll just shuffle all these boys around into their best roles and leave it there for now. I really want to offer some encouragement, but I don't like encouraging when we're ahead because it can sometimes backfire. So I'm just not saying anything. Fowry is now tiring as well. We have got Galley and Maltinus on the bench. We probably should actually be freshening up at the back. And Fowry's just going to have to stay on there. We don't want a tired centre-back when we're defending a one-goal lead, especially when it's a one-goal lead that could send us to the top of the table if the result in the other game stays as it is. Just a couple of minutes to go. We just need to hold on here, chaps. Please, can we hold on? This is why we've brought a fresh defender on. You shouldn't be getting in behind us. That's a £130,000 goalkeeper there in Kingsley Gotan with the counter-attack. I think we've got a three-on-three -three here. There is another defender who's stuck in right at the bottom of the screen and we've slowed things down, as we probably should, actually, in the circumstances. We're not chasing this game. We just want to keep possession of the ball and see it out. So I'm not going to complain too much. That we, uh, that we slowed that counter-attack down there. Deleste now winning the ball well in central defence. And Dealey playing over the top to Gabriel Tutu, who's in and tries the, uh, tries the audacious finish when really you just need to drill it into that far post. But he'll never learn, will he? That's why he'll never be a 30-goal-a-season striker. He's just a, a wonderful enigma. Uh, Cross comes in for Ndilu again, who's hit the base of the post with his header. I tell you what, given enough game time, he probably could be a 30-goal-a-season striker at this level. Amiens are now losing to Paris FC. So not only have we gone to the top of the table, we are clear at the top of the table. Well, we're not. We've got one point advantage at the top of the table. I can't show you it because we're now doing the second 11. Ah, we were. What? In fact, can, can I show you it? That was glitching before, and it used to show us the actual first team league table. Um, it's now not, apparently. I haven't even switched the goalkeeper out, and we're already losing. We're, we're in such poor form now with the second 11 that it doesn't even matter anymore, fingers crossed. Um, but, yeah, I can't actually show you the league table. Look at the state of that, though. Fingers crossed. Halfway through, they are getting relegated. But... We will wrap that up there. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.